Right. So, um, yeah. So our next talk is by uh, Horusk. I, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Maybe you should correct me when you come on stage. Because um, yesterday uh, I was asking my volunteers, oh, do you know how to pronounce this name? It's, it's looked like a name that maybe is, uh, is not an English name. So um, yeah, so please come on stage and correct my pronunciation of your name. <laughs> Hello. Hello, that's all right. Uh, it's Juarez, uh, but don't worry about it. You can call me Jay. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's easier for me because uh, yeah, I, I I can only speak English and well and Cantonese, which is my mother tongue. But anyway, so uh, I know that you are giving a talk about blockchain. I think it's really really interesting. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so without further ado, let's start. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Chuk. Um, yes. So first of all, I would like to again invite you to scan this QR code because we prepared several uh, free resources for you you know, uh, related to Python, uh, Visual, Visual Studio Code, and blockchain as well, OK? Um, all right, so uh, without further ado, let me introduce myself here. Uh, my name is Juarez uh, Barbosa Jr., and I'm an Azure Developer Engagement Lead. Uh, I work on Microsoft in Ireland. Uh, the talk today is about blockchain for Python developers, so I want to give you an overview about blockchain technology first. That's challenging because you know, 25 minutes, uh, perhaps uh, it's not uh, the uh, perfect uh, <laughs> uh, time, time span to talk about all things blockchain because it's a complicated technology. Somehow it involves several uh, computing disciplines like uh, cryptography, security, distributed computing, programming, uh, cloud native and containers and so on. But hopefully I'll be able to provide you a big picture and also some pointers considering Python uh, development uh, for a blockchain. OK, uh, here you can see my email address and my Twitter handle as well as my um, uh, Medium uh, handle as well. You know, I have several blog posts there about blockchain and different protocols like uh, Hyperledger Fabric. Uh, we have Corda, we have Quorum, Ethereum, and so on. Uh, and the, I summarized, I would say, the documentation there. Uh, so it's just a, 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 a perfect and, and, and easy way for you to start with blockchain, you know. Uh, so I do advise you to visit uh, the and check the content later. Let's start here. I will talk a little bit about my experience. I'm a Brazilian national, uh, proudly Brazilian. I'm based in Dublin, Ireland, and I'm living in Ireland for five years now. I have 24 years of IT exp uh, of experience in IT. Uh, out of that, nine years uh, in developer advocacy and community management. Uh, mostly, my experience is related to software engineering, uh, solutions architecture, and software architecture. Uh, in the past, you know, I, I collaborated in, uh, with uh, several uh, developer communities like Nokia developers. I became uh, a, a global champion, uh, let me remember, 15 years ago. Uh, also, I worked for IBM as the mobile evangelist and global thought leader for IBM Mobile and their uh, work, uh, former work light platform. Uh, I also helped them to write the very first book about mobile security, a red book. Uh, in Ireland, I worked for um, IBM, uh, IBM Watson here. Uh, and also I acted as a kind of cloud te technical rock star uh, uh, at that time. Then I joined Oracle Developers here, where I was uh, supporting the EMEA team uh, with developer relations. And recently uh, I joined Microsoft as the Azure Developer Engagement here in Ireland, as I said. Uh, I focus on technologies uh, primarily uh, in terms of languages, uh, Java, Python, a little bit of Golang as well, and some uh, languages that are specific to blockchain, like Solidity. Uh, in terms of technologies, I focus on emerging technologies, you know, blockchain, AI, and IoT primarily, the so-called um, exponential technologies. Uh, my experience with blockchain, just to mention, you know, when uh, actually IBM created the Hyperledger framework and, donate and contributed the code to the Hyperledger Foundation, I was working for IBM, and that's when I started to explore the uh, blockchain as a technology and a, and a protocol. Uh, and after that, I also worked for Oracle here uh, with a focus on blockchain in EMEA. We, we executed several projects and recently Microsoft as well. I have this role here where I actually um, uh, contribute and I fostered the developer community in Ireland, but I also wear a technical hat and I support the team with blockchain. Um, you can see here this character, actually, that's because in Ireland uh, they uh, <laughs> say that I'm a kind of uh, blockchain hero here in the country, something that I can somehow dispute. Uh, and again, you have my Twitter handle and, and my Medium account here, so please feel free to reach out to me in case you have doubts, okay, related to my talk today. So let's start. Uh, what is blockchain? You know, 
Blockchain is a technology, as I said, you know, that we can consider it in the scope of this, those uh, so-called uh, emerging technologies. Uh, and it's critical con considering digital transformation, for example. Several companies now, they are trying to, I would say, transform the, their businesses and, and, and the software and the business processes, and they are moving to the cloud as well. Uh, and blockchain is interesting because uh, blockchain is a kind of database. It's not only that, you know, you can also consider it somehow a middleware component. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's a different database. When you compare blockchain, for example, with the traditional databases like uh, relational databases or NoSQL databases, for example, you know, those databases, let's say we have a, a, a database and a, and a table there, the address table, and then I have my address record there. And let's say that my uh, the, the my house number is 45, but that's wrong. And I want to modify it, it because it should be 80, for example, you know, uh, to be uh, correct. Uh, with traditional databases, for example, I can run a SQL update, for example, and modify that record. With blockchain, that's not possible. And that's the first uh, critical and, and I would say a strong characteristic that we have in blockchain because we are talking about uh, an immutable database, you know. So blockchain, um, um, in case you have uh, something and, and some data recorded on chain, it's impossible to modify it. And then it adds, of course, more security and one more characteristic that we call traceability. Because uh, blockchain, uh, it's all about transactions. And we, normally we uh, want to control and uh, track and trace uh, assets, uh, not only digital assets, but also we can create a digital twin, for example, and I can create a representation and a smart contract to track, uh, I would say, a container, a car part or something like that. Uh, but given that you can't modify the record, then you can control, track, and trace the entire life cycle of a given asset, for example, as I explained. And traceability is really important. And it helps you with many things. For example, uh, let's say that you have a dispute situation. You are you have a container with um, medicines, for example, and they uh, have to be kept at a given temperature, for example, minus 10. Uh, and there are some problems with that, with the sensors or, or anything. You know, with blockchain, you can then record an event and then retrieve the entire um, uh, history about that given asset with the full traceability. And then you can prove that something wrong happened. You know, blockchain, uh, as I said, as a, a kind of exponential technology, uh, it's interesting when you combine it with the other technologies as, as well, you know, uh, considering uh, the uh, intersection with Things like AI, for example, in IoT, as I said, you can have sensors to track things, you know, and blockchain will give you uh, a very secure uh, data store that you can use uh, to, to, to control um, uh, the assets. Uh, the one uh, more characteristic of blockchain, we have a distributed network, you know, and you can say, okay, but databases, we also have somehow clusters, we have maybe Java application servers, and you can have a cluster as well. But this is different because normally we have disparate companies, company A and B, and they can have their own clusters. But in case you need to perform a transaction, for example, or execute a transaction uh, between company A and B, for example, an HTTP request, and the remote node is down, for example, there's no way to complete it. You know, Normally you need, uh, in the scope of transactions and transaction demarcation, a compensating transaction on something like that. Uh, but with blockchain, all the participants in a given network they have the very same copy of a given ledger, you know, the data store. So in case you have a blockchain network with 100 nodes, but we happen to have 40 nodes, uh, you know, down as a result of an outage or something like that, uh, it doesn't matter, you know, because you still can process the transactions because we have 60 other nodes that can receive the proposal for a given transaction and process that. And in the scope of that, we also have what we call smart contracts. Um, Right, these smart contracts at the end of the day, they are also a kind of a piece of software, a software component, but it's a little bit different. Uh, I will uh, present uh, here to you today uh, the different choices that you can have to develop a smart contracts. But the smart contract, when you uh, create a smart contract uh, expressing a given business logic, for example, and you deploy it uh, to a blockchain network, and it's there live and instantiated on chain, you know, it can somehow autonomously, uh, autonomously sorry, execute because you can start to listen uh, to a given context, for example, and given that there's traffic and there's a request with the valid uh, business uh, uh, information, the, the data input is valid, you can execute that smart contract then, uh, try to reach what we call consensus. Uh, and that's one more interesting thing because 
uh, blockchain networks, there's no uh, single entity that is actually responsible for everything. As I said, you know, normally all the nodes, they participate in, uh, in that topology uh, and it's needed to reach a consensus. There are different uh, consensus algorithms. Uh, in this code, for example, of Bitcoin, we have what we call pool or proof of work. Uh, but we also have other consensus algorithms like proof of stake, uh, proof of elapsed time, uh, proof of authority, and so on. Uh, and the, the the last thing here, blockchain also helps with security uh, because, as I said, it uses the same security infrastructure. So we are talking about PKI, public key infrastructure, with key stores, certificates, uh, and we can implement the so-called uh, triple way in security, you know, authentication, authorization, and auditing. And auditing, again, it helps with uh, traceability. Uh, so blockchain is a, a technology that's really interesting because uh, it can uh, help you also disintermediate some business processes, you know. Uh, there are several business processes where you have players, for example, where they just uh, get some data and then relate that to a given business entity, for example. But uh, with blockchain, given that everyone owns the same database and the same information, uh, you can uh, uh, remove those intermediates and expedite the business process. Uh, let's move here. As I explained then, uh, blockchain is a kind of a data store, uh, a distributed ledger. Uh, and we have what we call several transactions. And those transactions, they are comprised by a block. OK, I'm going to explain that shortly. All the participants in the given network, they have the same identity copy, uh, identical copy, sorry. Uh, and the network consensus helps uh, with the situation where you don't need to wait for one given authority on one given owner of a given software component or database to actually confirm one transaction, you know? And it helps with the situations uh, related to outages. For example, we know as architects, we have uh, when you are going to design a very good uh, solution architecture, for example, it's important to address and understand what we call the single points of failure, for example. But with blockchain, as all the, the nodes and all the participants have the same database, uh, there's no single point of failure, you know. So at the end of the day, it can also help with things like, uh, you know, the non-functional requirements in a given architecture, like uh, the distributed nature of it, uh, you know, disaster recovery, failover, and so on. Uh, this is just to give you an example of different blockchain networks. And by by, uh, and by the way, you know, some people think that blockchain is only about cryptocurrencies. Of course, for example, uh, Bitcoin was the very first uh, concrete implementation of blockchain technology. Uh, but I have several examples here that you can see that actually the blockchain technology uh, and not only crypto, you know, that can be applied to several different business uh, verticals, for example, in marketing niches. So let's talk a little bit about the different uh, blockchain networks that we have. Uh, we have what we call the public or the permissionless blockchain networks, like Bitcoin and Ethereum, for example. Uh, they are public because with the Bitcoin network, for example, I just need to allocate one hardware, one server, a hardware box, for example. Then I can install, install the mining software and I can join the network. I don't need to be authorized to join. You know, it's a public network. Uh, it's nice. It's interesting. You know, uh, it promotes, I would say, the distributed nature of it. I, I would say to uh, its best uh, extent somehow. But at the end of the day, the transactions, they are public ones, you know. And for uh, enterprises, normally this is not a good, uh, good situation. Let's say that I want to create a blockchain network. I'm a car manufacturer, for example, Honda. And I want to create one network here as the founder. And I want to invite my partners, uh, you know, the... The, the the dealerships the the the, the providers considering the source of, of raw materials and all those and also the customers i can create one mobile application for example to give them more visibility about uh, the car they are buying you know and, and the entire process and, and uh, from uh, where all the raw materials are being sourced from for example considering you know sustainability and things like that uh, but with the public blockchain there's no way to achieve this privacy and that's why we have what we call on the right side here, what we call the consortium or the uh, somehow private, but uh, we call them permissioned blockchains because there are several different protocols where you can promote and you can create one blockchain network and then you can invite your partners to join that network. But in order to join, you, you, you have to give them uh, one security certificate. You have to give them uh, a configuration and authorize them to join, okay? And the private one, normally we call it private because you can create your own uh, test network, you know, and run uh, and use it to develop uh, your solution. Uh, so we have several examples here considering the permissionless and permissioned networks. You can see, here, for example, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and uh, Litecoin, and so on, on, 
on the on, on, on the left here. And, and then the permissioned ones, uh, we have Hyperledger, we have Corda, we have uh, Quorum, for example, and several others. Uh, this is just to let you understand what the, the blockchain uh, structure uh, is all about. You know, we, uh, when we create a, a blockchain network, we have what we call the Genesis block, block zero. For example, with Bitcoin, block zero happened as far as I remember back in 2009. You know, and the and the and the chain size now is more than 200 gigabytes, for example. Uh, but we, with the permissioned block uh, protocols, for example, when you create a new network or a new channel, as we call it. Actually, it starts from block zero, and it can help uh, with things like, for example, scalability. You know, because you are creating, a, you, I can create a channel with partners only. I can create a channel with my providers. I can create a specific channel to customers, and then uh, I would say you have more control, and the blocks uh, and the chain size uh, will not be the, so long. I would say, right? Um, considering the length and the number of blocks and transactions, you can see that a block comprises several transactions. And you can see the chain here because every block actually it has a reference to the previous block. It's it's a kind of linked list, you know, somehow. But that's how you can retrieve the entire information about all the transactions and also the security is related to that because some some um, consensus uh, protocols like proof of work, for example, it demands a lot of uh, computing resources, processors, you know, and electricity and things like that. In China, we have those huge mining, massive mining rigs, for example. Uh, but it would be possible actually to reverse all the transactions in order to in introduce a rogue transaction, for example, uh, and that's uh, the security with blockchain. Perhaps it will it will change a little bit with quantum computing, but several blockchain projects now they are uh, also exploring quantum proof algorithms. Uh, but this is just to give you one idea about the data structure. Uh, where is blockchain valuable? As I explained, you know, so it's not only about financial services and cryptocurrencies. You know, if you think about your business process and all the use cases and the functionalities, there are ways, all the, the places where you need more security, traceability, transparency. You need to decentralize the data and promote what we call the the the, uh, the single, so, uh, single source of truth, you know, and, and, and the collective ownership of data, for example there's an opportunity to use blockchain technology. And then we have several business verticals here. You can see retail, insurance, uh, capital markets, uh, Gov, digital ID, for example. There are several interesting projects related to identification. For example, the United Nations, they have one project called ID2020, one day one, where they want to create IDs for people who don't have a birth certificate, but also give them a bank account. You know, uh, you can visit the project uh, anyway. Uh, and just to mention this presentation, uh, uh, I'm going to share it uh, right after my presentation, uh, my, my presentation here today. We have a, a channel on Discord, Microsoft Azure, so make sure that you can visit there and, and check out the information. I have several links here and so on. Uh, you can he see healthcare here as well. There are several ways that you can uh, control uh, the information about patients, for example, uh, in a compliant way. Let's talk a little bit about one example here, Hyperledger Fabric. Uh, this is... I would say a vastly deployed protocol and network, you know, we uh, in the scope of a foundation created under the scope of the Linux Foundation umbrella. So we are talking about open source here. We have almost 300 uh, corporations collaborating there. Basically all the uh, 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 giant tech companies, you know, we have banks, we have um, uh, airline companies, we have car manufacturers and so on. Uh, it's a permissioned network, you know, it's an open source protocol, of course, so you can go to uh, GitHub and download and start your own example. I have some pointers here, but it's a permissioned network, so it's good for enterprises. Uh, we have what we call the, the MSP service, the membership service. It's a kind of CA certificate authority from where you can, uh, of course, get all the certificates and the authorization to, to join the, this blockchain network. Interesting to say it's modular. So in case you are not glad with the, give, with, with the given consensus algorithm, you can write your own and plug it. Okay, so it's really flexible. Uh, the same thing with the data stores. For example, you can replay the underlying data stores and so on. Uh, you can, of course, implement what uh, I said, the smart contract, you know, the beauty in blockchain, you know, the autonomous smart contract. No, it's it's somehow an active component, not so passive component, because in software architecture, and, 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 and uh, we have passive and active components, depending if we are talking about, uh, I would say, synchronous and asynchronous processes and, and so on. Uh, and interesting to say, uh, there's no requirement considering cryptocurrencies, because with, with networks like Bitcoin and Ethereum, for example, you need to own BTC, Bitcoin, or ETH, Ether, for example, in order to pay for a given transaction. But with Hyperledger, no. You just need to provision your network, deploy your smart contract, create the, the, the client applications, 
uh, and that can be an iOS or Android application or a web application, for example, uh, and that's it, okay? As I said, it's managed uh, by the Linux Foundation. It follows the same governance model. Uh, there are several projects under this umbrella, um, but the main ones where we can uh, develop uh, Python clients, for example, uh, we have uh, Hyperledger Fabric and also Sawtooth, okay? You can see uh, some projects here, you know, just to give you a glimpse of what I'm talking about, but I do invite you to visit uh, hyperleisure.org and, and, and check yourself. Um, let's explain a little bit how a blockchain net, uh, transaction works then. By the way, uh, the pointers that I have to source code here in the, in the, the Python and SDK, I'm talking about the client application here, you know, and where we have the Fabric SDK in light blue here and the keys, okay? Uh, and we have several components here. As I said, uh, blockchain network, for example, normally we have uh, several Docker containers, you know, and, and different nodes and peers that can process the transactions. So the client uh, enrolls in a transaction. This is actually a kind of authentication phase. And given that you are properly authenticated, you can propose uh, an endorsement for a transaction. You send it to a processing peer. You know, but this is actually an in-memory simulation, so you are not modifying the underlying databases yet. You know, you just uh, submit the data input. It goes to your smart contract. It runs your smart contract and the business logic in it. You know, and it validates the data input. In case everything is is okay, it is returned, and you receive what we call the read-write uh, set. You know, with the validation of that transaction, and then you can move to actually send a request to a component called. The ordering service, you know, it's a kind of gatekeeper that controls and batches all the transactions. And then uh, the committer uh, node then will, uh, it will be the, uh, the one that actually acts on the transaction bat. And at this moment, yes, we do have uh, the, the transaction uh, persistence, you know, so it's effectively uh, returned uh, to the underlying databases. And after that, there's a way to also implement a kind of callback, you know, uh, and notify your client that the transaction was uh, somehow committed and confirmed. And this is useful, you know, maybe you want to send an email uh, message or maybe move a file, uh, uh, you know, and use FTP to um, maybe pro uh, do some kind of um, um, batch processing, for example, or maybe show a pop-up, um, but that's it, you know. So this is the basic flow. You can see this smart contract at the top here. This is actually uh, in Hyperledger we call it chain code, uh, but this is where you can implement the the cloud side or the back end side of your blockchain application. And the other, as, as, as I explained, is the client side, you know, uh, a mobile application or a web application. Let's have a quick demo here now. Um, let me see where it is. Yes. Uh, I have uh, created one blockchain network here uh, with Hyperledger. Um, okay. What's happening here? Mm. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, for example, just uh, uh, let's run one transaction here, uh, and I have, for example, what we call chain code, and I want to ch to, to to query the the state of a given contract. This is actually the simulation of a bank account. So, for example, uh, peer one, and 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 then for one party here, it has a balance of 150, for example. Okay, and I can check then for 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 the same for for B, for example. Uh, let me query uh, B here now. Okay, uh, and you will see that we'll have, uh, actually I performed the transaction, sorry. Uh, a, B, invoke, query, B, invoke, query, A. Uh, so let me copy it here just one sec, please. Um, yes, uh, this one here. Yeah, let's query B here now, okay, uh, because I just want to show you the, the different balances here. Uh, one has 150, the other one 140. Okay, so then I can invoke a transaction to happen, and all those steps, you know, the authentication, the simul, the in-memory simulation, and all the nodes that will try to reach a consensus and validate the the, the data input, and also reach a consensus and return the read-write uh, set, for example. Uh, this will happen in the scope of an invoke transaction. The invoke transaction when you have CRUD. Uh, transactions, for example, with traditional transactions, you know, we have create, read, update, and delete. You know, normally read uh, transactions, uh, you don't need to demarcate them in the scope of uh, transactions, for example. This is a narrow, actually. I uh, I would say optimize several systems in my career because some people that demarcate um, 
SQL select queries in the scope of transactions, and that creates so many uh, performance uh, issues, for example. Uh, I executed here one more transaction, and now I can, for example, uh, query uh, A again, and you will see that the balance will be a different one, you know? So this is just to provide you a glimpse of a blockchain, a real-world blockchain transaction. Uh, the good thing we, in Azure, we do have what we call managed blockchain. So um, because blockchain is complex, we are talking about open source pro components, for example. So you have to work with, as I said, a typical blockchain network with just two, one founder and two participants, for example. Uh, you need 21 Docker containers, typically, you know, and you need to control all the IP addresses, certificates, ports, smart contracts, different and specific command line tools. So with Azure, we do have a dashboard where we consolidated all the information. You can see the transactions here, for example. Uh, this is a member node, but I, I can show you, for example, here, there are different ways that, uh, for example, you can create different nodes. This is one peer node, for example, the one that processes the transactions. And this is what we call the other node, you know, the one that belongs to a given network founder, for example, Honda, in my example. Uh, but let's proceed here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the development. Uh, considering Python, for example, Hyperledger Fabric, there's uh, an of, uh, unofficial uh, Python SDK that you can use to develop uh, client applications that will be able to talk with blockchain networks, you know. Uh, and we have the, a couple of different uh, resources here uh, on, on GitHub, you know, where you can get more information about uh, this SDK and also a tutorial. Uh, let me show you, for example, here um, the screen from where I can explain to you uh, the basic steps. Uh, this is the project, the repository. You can see Hyperledger here. It belongs to hyperledger.org with all the steps here and how you can uh, stand up a, a, a blockchain network, for example, an example one. There are several steps here. So what you are seeing on Azure, for example, you need to perform some steps here to create the other node, for example, the certificate authority node and the peer nodes as well. You know the number of peers here. There are some configuration files uh, that you can use. Um, and then you have to install the Fabric SDK, start a network, you know, and with, with the peers, the order and the CA, as I said. Uh, there is something related to credentials and authentication here. There are several different, different ways that you can authenticate your client component, for example. But at the end of the day, what I want to show you here, uh, and of course, you can use what we call wallets as well, you know, security wallets. Uh, but this is one example how you can join a new channel, for example, and perform some transactions. And you can see here all the example code. You can instantiate in one client. You need a JSON file with the information about uh, your network and the security certificates. Uh, you can get that from um, uh, on Azure. You can download the admin credentials here and the connection profile. The connection profile is the actual JSON file that I was talking about. OK. And yes, and you have several examples here as well that you can explore. As I said, I'm going to share this presentation with all the links um, today. Uh, please uh, do check our um, channel on, on, on Discord. Okay, But it's an easy step. You know, some imports here, uh, as usual. Uh, there's an async event loop here, and you instantiate the client with the proper configuration. And then you can start to, I would say, interact and perform some queries, for example. There's a sample here considering the uh, the responses and so on. So uh, please uh, make sure uh, to visit our Discord channel to get this information. Uh, I want to talk uh, a little bit more about uh, these smart contracts because unfortunately we don't have options yet to implement Python smart contracts, but only create client applications that can um, interact with blockchain networks. You know, so in the scope of Hyperledger blockchain, for example, we you can create smart contracts. You can use Java, GoLang. And, and JS and, and Node.js as the uh, smart contract language. I'm talking about the, the component where you implement the business logic and you deploy it to the cloud side, you know, the backend side. But uh, we do have an option, uh, the SDK that I've just talked about that you can use to actually extend or augment one existing Python application to add more security or the traceability or the things that I talked about, you know, and you can use that SDK. Uh, and you, of course, can also use the other languages. We have uh, Visual Studio Code. By the way, Microsoft has uh, one, sorry, has one um, uh, extension for Visual Code specific to uh, blockchain uh, that you can also install. And, and there are other choices here. For example, my Medium blog, for example, in case you are interested in that, I have examples here with all the screenshots that you can use to deploy this uh, Kubernetes, this Hyperledger uh, uh, network on top of Kubernetes, for example. Uh, there are pointers here to the, the GitHub examples. 
for Hyperledger. The same thing with Quorum. There are several different protocols considering uh, blockchain. You know, Quorum is a different protocol, more aligned with Ethereum, you know, and you can see that the tool set here is totally different, but you can still use VS Code. And we have here the blockchain dev kit for Ethereum provided by Microsoft as well. Uh, by the way, uh, Quorum and Ethereum, they use a different uh, programming language called Solidity. It's a kind of DSL, you know, do domain-specific language. It's actually a programming language, but it's quite specific to blockchain, you know, with several uh, things and data structures that are related to that. Um, some pointers here as well uh, in the blog posts that I talked about that you can check, you know, in case you want to explore that. The same thing with Corda. Corda is interesting. It's... Some people people say they, uh, that Quarta is not a blockchain network, but actually uh, I consider it uh, as blockchain because at the end of the day, it's a Java framework uh, that uses security with several uh, implementations uh, and, and uses uh, underlying uh, relational databases as the data stores. And you can use uh, Java and Kotlin, you know, so it's totally JVM friendly here. Uh, so you can see uh, VS Code here as well, but you can also use Eclipse or IntelliJ. Um, several examples here as well. I have a couple of blog posts where I show how to run a, a Quarta demo network in a test node. Uh, let us let me talk a little bit about Azure uh, Heroes. Uh, it's one program that we have where we created several uh, blockchain-based uh, badges uh, that you can get. You know, by the way, I reserved 500 badges for you. Uh, they are lifelong ones, you know, so it's not like, for example, when you get a certification and let's say that the company... Uh, providing the, the, the badges for you uh, goes bankrupt, for example, so your badges will be gone? No, because these uh, blockchain badges, they are recorded on chain on Ethereum, so they will be there forever for you. They are lifelong badges, you know? And I reserved uh, 500 uh, learner badges, so make sure that uh, to visit our uh, channel on Discord, as I said, and get your badge as well. Let me talk a little bit now about uh, blockchain on Azure. As I said, uh, blockchain is, uh, is is complicated because uh, you need to, to I would say, manage the entire um, deployment network, not only the smart contracts, you know, uh, and this IT governance is really complex in terms of IT infrastructure. Uh, you are working with open source, so you need to have this the proper security patching and things like that to avoid uh, the exploitation of security roles and so on. So that's why it's interesting to use a solution like what we have in Azure called the Azure Blockchain Service. It's a managed solution, the, the, the dashboard that I showed you. Uh, we do have something called the, the Blockchain Workbench. Beyond the Blockchain Service, we also provision several Azure services out of the box for you. It's good for POCs and pilots. You know, so uh, you will also get, for example, IoT Hub. You will get Azure Active Directory for the security repository authentication and authorization and so on. And we do have the, the, the dev kit. The dev kit, I'm talking about the VS Code extension, but there are also several code samples on GitHub that you can leverage. Let's say that you want to send one SMS message and you want to use the Twilio API, for example, and control that uh, on blockchain, there's an example there for you, okay? Uh, so we have the dev kit, uh, the examples that I talked about on GitHub. So the key takeaways here, you know, uh, Azure is a very good uh, blockchain platform because it's not a, the, some some other cloud players. They only have Hyperledger Fabric, for example. No, we do have Ethereum. We have Corda. We, we have uh, several other protocols. We have Hyperledger Fabric and so on. So you have choice here. It's a managed platform. Um, simplification, of course, because uh, when you abstract all this complexity, considering the, the IT governance and the infrastructure, for example, you can just focus on create, creating your client applications, as I explained, the smart contract, and that's it. You have a full blockchain application ready for you. Okay, so you can, of course, start from scratch and create a new blockchain application, or maybe you can extend an existing Java application, Golang application, uh, Node.js one, or even Python application, for example. Okay. And this is just a glimpse of the workbench that I talked about. You can see the gateway service here for IP, API management and uh, IoT Hub, for example, Active Directory here, several different components along with uh, the uh, Azure blockchain service here, right? So it's worth uh, having a look at it. Uh, the governance, I talked about it. So that's it, my presentation. Uh, there's just one more thing that I would like to, to show you here. I have one more example here. It's a different protocol, of course. Uh, it's Solidity. You can see the extension here, .sol, you know, so it's just a simple smart contract. But you can see 
uh, with the blockchain, uh, the, the blockchain extension for VS Code, for example, how easy it is to create blockchain applications uh, with uh, VS Code and Azure, of course, you know, I'm connected here, you know, uh, I'm connected to, to that blockchain network that I've just showed you, you know, so you can manage all the, your transactions here and your connections. And, and for example, it's easy if, because I don't need to run several command line tools with several arguments. For example, I can just right click here and, and, and for example, uh, click build contract and you will see that I can build uh, my smart contract, you know, uh, easily. And then I can also deploy it. Uh, I can also run maybe one transaction and show you this um, network in action here. Uh, one more, um, one more uh, quick demo here. For example, I have to connect to this blo blockchain network. Okay, that's running on Azure as well. Uh, that's a kind of shell here, and that's what I'm doing now. I'm connecting to that blockchain network. You can see that the, this ID here is actually what I have here in this configuration file here, okay, on, 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 on VS Code. Uh, and then I can just move to execute some transactions, you know. So first, let's read and, and check what we have there at the moment recorded on chain, um, for example. Okay, so you can see, hello, pajamas, blah, blah, blah. Um, Let's maybe change this message here and say something like, hello, um, Pythonistas. Um, yes, something like that, okay? Uh, and then I can run this transaction. So I'm going to modify, actually create a new block, okay? And append it to, 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 to the blockchain. Um, sorry, okay, yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, it takes some time uh, uh, to reflect, but I think given the number of nodes that I have, we can check now again. Yes, so it's modified. So it's one more example. And you, for example, we've just deployed this math contract, right? I compiled, but I can also deploy it from here, you know? So I just right click again and I click deploy smart contracts and you can see here uh, that the, 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 the deployment, I select the target network here, okay? And the deployment starts. Um, and but, well, that's it. Uh, that's everything that I have for you today. So as I said, make sure that you scan uh, the QR code so you can get the free uh, courses that we have at Microsoft Learn. And also make sure the, to visit our channel on Discord to get this presentation with all the links and also the, the, the Azure Heroes uh, blockchain badgers and uh, of course the, the free courses uh, that we, I've just talked about, okay? Thank you very much. And that's everything. So uh, in case you have questions, I'm more than happy to answer them now. Yeah, thank you so much. So uh, if, uh, yeah, if you have questions, uh, you can actually find uh, Horus uh, at uh, Discord and there's the Microsoft channel. Make sure you check it out. There's a lot of good things like free courses and all these things for you. So make sure you check it out. So actually uh, this stream is about to finish. Oh, I will let Horus